Hey people, Fernando doing another video here for the channel and in this case answering one of the very common questions I get which is what gun should I be getting, I already have this firearm, what else should I be buying and this is a video um, looking forward to 2023 given how things keep changing around the world, well I've done these videos before many times but as things keep changing around the world maybe the priorities are also different. Before I go on with the video remember that you have the channel with a ton of information already do use it use a search function remember also that no matter what guns you have if you don't have enough food to begin with then you're missing the point food is always your main priority when it comes to survival and preparedness for the majority of disasters and emergencies that realistically you may one you may be facing one day so always keep in mind keep it real doesn't make any sense and I know a ton of people that have way too many guns of course we like guns we all get that but don't, look fo don't lose focus on what you're doing. Are you just collecting stuff that you like? Are you being reasonable about it? Are you missing the point regarding certain big holes in your preps that you're already missing? So food, crucial. How much? I mean, you can never have enough. I've done videos before about there's a point in which if you need more than a year worth of food, you probably shouldn't be there to begin with. So six months, about a year, that makes sense to me. You know, start working with those numbers. Other thing, if you don't have the training so as to use these things even if you think you do even if you watch John Wick a bunch of times and you think you can you know pretty much do the same thing because you do it with your buddies in the range have you actually taken self-defense shooting classes have you actually taken advanced shooting classes have you actually taken class on uh, fighting with other people is that something you've ever done if the answer is no then there's a good chance you're overestimating your capabilities in the use of firearms when it comes down to that moment now this is about training if you're not training all the time then your your level when when the moment comes will not be what you would probably hope for but if you've never done it before you have no clue what you're doing I have addressed quite a bit of how to use firearms for self-defense in street survival skills because I understand that right away that people think they know how to shoot because they hit a target and even if you're practicing sports shooting which you definitely should there's a difference between shooting in practical shooting competitions and shooting so as to end someone's life because your own family your own life is at risk one thing is fighting with a firearm the other thing is competing in a beautiful fascinating interesting sport which is practical shooting but we're talking about fighting with guns that's the stuff that I address in street survival skills even better get yourself a class with that not any jo any joker just find yourself a qualified instructor that has a good reputation in the community I've known of cases where it's even more damage than they that they do by having bad instructors teaching people there's a lot of that around so be very careful street survival skills it will definitely help you and get you in the right track and teach you the basics on using firearms for self-defense for the economic aspect of preparedness streets are uh, surviving the economic collapse that's my other book you have links for those there below in the description of the video number one obvious for everyone this is you know no brainer get yourself your handgun get yourself your Glock 19 if you're planning on carrying 17 either one will work beautifully well for you and yes it's downright boring at this point but there's a lesson there it's boring because everyone is using them now I say everyone at the same time the US military adopted a, a handgun that fired on its own when it was dropped to the floor uh, and it's even being there's legal action being taken taking against the company because it seems that it also fires when it's in the holster if it has a round in the chamber so not all guns are made the same way the reputation the quality that you get from Glock the amount of years and the amount of guns in the hands of military and law enforcement all over the world tell you um, a definite story as of how much you can trust the platform or not not all guns have that in fact no other gun has that now my advice would be to go with 9mm, oh but I like 40, I like this, sure do whatever you want but have yourself, get yourself a Glock 9mm because it is by far the most common caliber when things keep on you know, deteriorating and it becomes harder to find ammunition you will thank me for it, yes it's likely the first one to be out of the shells, flying out of the shells but it's also the one that will be restocked the quickest, the soonest, if there's a, a, a few rounds and I'm talking about uh, having seen this 
this in different countries, different parts of the world, little you know, gun stores lost in the middle of nowhere, to what box of ammunition is your neighbor likely to have somewhere stored? Well, the common calibers, 9mm, 22, 12 gauge, 357 Magnum, 38, 308, 223. Those are the standards you're likely to come across and that's what you should have in terms of your guns. Now, if you're not planning on being much of a shooter, which you know, I'm addressing now that the, you know, most of my viewers are, are from US and yeah, most uh, are gun people, but for people that are not into firearms, uh, revolver is still a solid option. Four inch, K-frame, somewhat in that size, steel is gonna be having enough weight, so has to be more than controllable. And you can also use 38 Special, which is also quite decent round in itself and pretty popular too. So it's very versatile and if you're gonna be adding more than your basic three guns that I wanna cover in this video, yeah, by all means, do it. Now, you, you see this and say, hey, there's more than three guns. Yes, there's th more than three guns because the reality is different depending on where you are, right? So. Once you, you cover your basic survival firearm, which is a nine millimeter Glock pistol, you're looking at number two. Your number two, at least the way I see it for 2023, should be a semi-automatic rifle. AR platform is more than, uh, um, popular enough for you to consider it. I particularly don't like it all that much. I like other things. I like the FAL. I like a bunch of other uh, platforms that I think are, are better, but you cannot deny the popularity of the AR and the amount of accessories. Yes, it is lightweight, it is accurate, it is ergonomic. So all of those things are good. Is it the most resilient platform ever made? Uh, that you know, most perfectly designed fire? Of course not. <laughs> no, that's not the case, but it is good enough so as to get the job done as long as you take proper care of it within reason. You need to know your gun. This is, goes the same for any, even a Glock pistol. Glocks do break too. Now, if you know how to repair it, my advice in that regard, get yourself a, a Glock Armorer's course. Usually they last just a few hours. Check in your local gun store, uh, in your range, in your local gun range, uh, if there's any uh, Glock Armorer's class being uh, you know, around in the, in, in the calendar and if you can do it you'll learn a lot you'll learn how to completely fix that gun and that's crucial as we move towards uh, a more complicated time where you know these things will be more expensive these things may be you know more complicated for you to to procure uh, the way in which you stock up a few you know uh, spare parts for your gun all of these things will make you run that gun when other people are you know not in such a in that same position with your uh, AR I would recommend if you can short barrel 14 and a half inch M4 format. Yes, I know there's limitations in some uh, parts of the world in terms of the uh, length of the barrel. Go with as short as you can. If it's 16 inches, 20 inches, whatever is the case, but basically something that is popular, that you know how to run, that it works, and that it, it, hopefully it's something that has been or is currently in use by our forces, and you know, especially if that's the case for your own country. Now, you're looking, you're watching this video from a country where they use AK platform, okay, go with an AK. You know, AK is perfectly fine too, but you want something that you can get parts for, that you can repair, and you know how to use well. Yeah, you can get yourself your red dot, your light, definitely get yourself a sling, that would be the first thing to get for any long gun, but you get where I'm going for here. Number three would be a 22 carbine. Now we could go with a 22 handgun. The carbine will give you a little bit more power, a little bit more range. It's going to be easier for you to shoot. 22 rifles are already, and 22 carbines are already small enough. This is a breakdown model that you can make it even more compact. So. If this is a gun that you're going to be using for what? For plinking, it could be you know working in a in a somewhat limited self-defense role. I mean, more than enough people have been uh, capable to uh, of defending themselves with 22 rifles. There wouldn't be uh, you know it wouldn't be the first one. But mostly, you're looking at a gun that is you know, a working tool. If, especially if you live out in the country and you have to uh, you know take care of, of pests, even for some hunting. There's so many uses 
chances for it that as my third gun, I would definitely go with a 22 carbine. More than enough said about it, you get the point. Now, if you're limited in terms of what you can have, for example, in terms of, of the uh, semi-automatic long guns, there's an option of going with a pistol caliber long gun. My advice would be something that uses the same magazines as your Glock. Hopefully something that still uses popular parts like this, uh, just right carbine that uses a bunch of AR uh, components, so that's going to be easier to uh, buy if you need a replacement, something that is very modular, uh, something that's easy to repair, simple, those are always good things. Now, you're probably watching this from other countries in which maybe you don't have the financial means, maybe it's not even legal for you to own a handgun and you are limited to, you know, maybe a shotgun. A shotgun is still, a, you know, a, a, a pretty formidable weapon in its own right in, in certain specific roles. If you're looking at home defense, a pump action shotgun like that Monster 500, it, it is adequate. It wouldn't be my first choice. I wouldn't want to have a, a, a shotgun instead of uh, having a, a, a Glock 9mm if I'm limited to only one gun, you know, but yeah, it has been used very effectively so, and it is still in use by military forces all over the world. So yeah, uh, Mossberg 500 or Remington 870, uh, you know, stick to popular brands. People think that it's all the same when it's not, even if it's quality, even if it's expensive, popularity means that it has held as time went by and it stays in the market for some reason, probably good reasons. You can have something like this. This one I bought used, a few bucks. It's really affordable to buy yourself a used shotgun if you look around with the with the two barrels. So I have the long barrel for small game hunting, short barrel with sights, so as to use logs. You could use it for you know, large game hunting. Not the first choice for anyone, right? You could still use your rifle if you have you know, if, if you have some, a, a scope for it, probably would be even better than going with, with your shotgun, depending on exactly what you're hunting. But with slugs, very powerful gun. For home defense with a short barrel, yet again, same thing. These are things you consider when you do this in a in, in a objective, analytic approach just to cover your bases. With this, you're pretty well covered. You wanna spend another 5,000, 10,000 bucks in guns? You know, be my guess. I like guns and I definitely have more than this myself. So I get it. But from a practical perspective, from what you actually need, these would be the three I'd like to have You know, going into 2023. Uh, we're looking at a very difficult world. There's parts of the world. I have my channel in English. I have my channel in Spanish. I try translate my books in Spanish as well. You don't know what it's like in other parts of the world for some people, and I'm not even talking about Ukraine. Of course, Ukrainians wish they had an AR and knew how to use it before they got invaded by the Russians. But there's people in South America now, where I am from, in Argentina, in Chile, that they're looking at terrorists, in many cases financed by the same Russians and Chinese operating in other parts of the world that are terrorizing farmers in rural communities in South America the RAM terrorist group that pretends to be an Aboriginal Native American tribe, well, those are just terrorists. I've had more than enough videos sent from people having their houses burned down by those, those terrorists in, in Chile, in Argentina, and other parts of South America. This is an ongoing conflict, and you just don't know what will happen next. I mean, we've been surprised over the years more than enough. I think that at this point, most people get it. But yeah, these would be the basis I'd cover myself. And depending on what restrictions you have, try to work around it with this, you know, with, with this logic, with this uh, um, um, options that I explained just here, okay? Folks, all for now, take care, share the video if you liked it, subscribe to the channel, that's always much appreciated, and if you can leave a review for any of my books that you liked, that's going to be much appreciated as well. Take care.